So I was hanging around in the Let's Talk About Reaper Discord channel and someone asked about how to handle the level or the parameters of the first effects in the chain using like the least amount of actions possible. More or less that was the thing. And what happened, we started talking and I figured out a way around it and I want to share it with you because you should, it's good to know that you can use control change signals from any MIDI controller to modify parameters even as a default for Reaper. So I already have that video on how to load any plugin faster, how to use track templates. I have done the, those kind of videos on how about we take that a bit further and we load up an FX chain already associated with some MIDI controller. So straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis and let's learn about how to take advantage of a couple of knobs that you're probably not using on your MIDI controllers. I have a larger session here. Just so you realize that I'm not cheating at in any way, I'm going to make a new session, I'm going to make add a, a new track, I'm going to add an FX chain and add the sum channel with MIDI. That's the way I saved it, so I know that's the one. Once I open it, what I'm trying to show you today is how to have all of these knobs on a MIDI controller that you always have at hand near your desk or that you just have to plug and get it going okay i have this zone controller k2 and as you can see whenever i move one of here the frequency selector is moving on each and every single one if i move these ones the gain is moving around the q is moving around i can turn the gain the white q on and with this i can change the ratio the attack the release and the threshold right so this is what I, what we're going to learn today Things that you should know and why some MIDI controllers might seem to not be working, and I have been through this a couple of times, is that if you plug in a MIDI controller and Reaper is already open, uh, what I usually do is just go into audio MIDI devices and I just reset all MIDI devices and it actually detects them. That's something that could happen. Second of all, you have to have the tracks armed and you have to have the MIDI in from either all inputs or just from the controller that you're using. So if I do it like this, let me change the threshold. See, it's working. So that's the only two things that might be troubleshooting that you might need. Let's go back to the session. Whenever I make a new track, I always like to have this VU meter. And now I always want to have some sort of channel strip because I mostly use Reaper for audio stuff and mixing. So I always need some sort of uh, channel strip so you can open from the fx fx section in the track you can go up here to fx and you can save chain as default for new tracks and now it's saved so whenever i make a new channel those two load up and since this one is already the one that's related to the midi uh to the midi controller that i have i can just arm the track and it's paying attention to my controller, right? Within this session, what I want to do is I want to be able to work faster and stop dragging my mouse back and forth all the time. So I have set up my MIDI controller that works better for the kind of channel strip situation that I'm using. I know not everyone cares so much for so much planning and such. So whenever you go to the MIDI controller user guide or user manual, because I have seen both words used, you will usually see which control changes are assigned to which knobs uh, or even which buttons. So that way this will be so much faster. So this is a controller and here is the mapping of what control change is related to which one. It has three because this controller has three layers. If you click down here, you can change from the red to the yellow and the green layers. So I did this small map for the EQ where I was planning out what I wanted to have. So the Toucan has all of the frequency selectors right on the left. Then I have all of the gains in the second column. And I have a couple of extra ones on the right. 
And I struggled a lot for making these buttons toggle. Um, I asked a couple of people and they said that probably it has to do with the MIDI controller. I didn't find anything that had to do with that. So if anyone knows how to make this button associate to a toggle behavior so I can turn this button on and off, very much appreciate it. I didn't figure out a way how to make it happen. So this is more or less the mapping of what I have, you know? And I added that fourth column for the dynamic section, for the compressor section. Cool. Okay, so once I had this set up, what this lets me do is I can just loop a section. I can even have all of the sum channels open if I want to, or whatever track I'm working in. And remember, you have to arm the track. So I have to do something like this and I just start EQing as I would on, a, on an actual console. And you get the idea. So one thing that you might want to consider is maybe printing some sort of uh, layer that you can put above your MIDI controller whenever you're using it that way. So you start getting used to the muscle memory of working with the same knobs for the same things. So it's a lot faster. The bad thing is that you don't have like a visual representation of where the knobs are just by looking at it if you change the channel. So that's a shame. The other thing that I would use a lot is uh, the commands that I usually use for changing from track to track. I'm using the two keys after the P on your keyboard for going back one channel to the previous track and going to the next track. Those are the two that I'm using. And I also have on my C letter, toggle record arm for selected track. So that moves great with it. Here there's an option for actually not having to do click or press arm track whenever you're selecting track so you can play with the channels where you can just right click on the on the arm button and go into automatic record arm when selected track and it's going to change into an arrow so whenever that's not the selected track that's going to change so maybe if you're doing it only on audio channels because you're only recently importing all of your session and once you have them all imported, you might want to have some sort of either action for not having to do right click and select this every time, you know, or you might want to have some sort of, well, I was editing the video and then I found out that the vocal recording died on me. So I'm going to re-record the end of this video. Let's make it fast. Remember that the action is toggle automatic record arm when track selected, selected, find it in the description. This is the one that I have activated so that whenever I'm changing from one track to another, I'm always changing the effects using my MIDI controller. If you end up tweaking it enough and you like the way it goes, remember that you can just right click the effects. You can open the FX chain over here. Then you can go all the way up here to FX and save FX chain. This is where I have saved my some channel MIDI FX. That way I can identify it and load it anywhere I like. 
So for this to work within Reaper, this is the fastest part of it. You have to open whatever plugin you're trying to set up. In this case, I have the equalizer. Remember that I have all of these knobs that you're looking right here. I will lower my camera a bit so you can see whenever I'm moving a knob. So again, I'm moving the frequency, the gain, and I'm moving the bandwidth uh, of the equalizer. So that's all, all I have. On this last column, what I have are controls for the compressor section, as you can see right here. I can have the threshold since I rather have a larger fader for it. I also have the ratio, the attack, and the release for it. So whenever you move enough in a plugin in Reaper, after moving it, you can go to parameter and parameter modulation MIDI link, and I can go into link from MIDI FX parameter, and I can start setting up all setting all of them one by one. With the previous chart that I show you, I know that this one will be a certain number, this one will be another number, this will be another number. So I can just go into left click, control change. Now I can start assigning all of them. That's pretty much all the things that you need to do. And maybe the last thing that might uh, be some troubleshooting in case it's not working precisely, probably when you just set it up, it's going to open up at 0% on the offset, scale at 100%, and you might even have this like that. And that's the starting point of the parameter when it's reading it, so you might want to center it and see how the knob reacts to it. Let's watch the high frequency gain. Whenever I shove it to the left and I move around this one, I see I have a full range of it, so this could work. In case it's simply not working, you can try fiddling around a little bit with these two because maybe this happens to work differently on your MIDI controller. So if something is not working, please be sure to check something like that. For example, if this first fader shows up in the center, like the baseline value, then it will maybe only go all the way to the middle, but it won't go past it. So you have to assign the offset that way, whenever it hits, your knob hits full right, it's going to be full right. And whenever it goes to the left, it's not going full left, see? So that's why I have an offset set to it. That's minus 45. And that's why I can set it up like this. There are probably several configurations that could make this work. For example, the baseline value all the way to the left and the offset at 0%. So just find the one that suits you best for whatever MIDI controller you're using. You have to repeat that process for all of the knobs that you have. All you have to do, I promise, it's more like just do it several times. So you get it set up once and you can start working with it. You could also have your, within the action list, you could also set up, for example, a controller to send the volume, to send the pan or, or to activate the solo send or mute uh, using another controller. So have fun with it. This is the way to build your custom surface for mixing or for working with Reaper for different workflows. Have fun with it. If you like this kind of videos, be sure to li comment, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and all of those things that people on YouTube say. And straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and thanks for listening.